In this video, I'm going to talk about equilibrium solutions to differential equations, specifically first order autonomous ordinary differential equations. Before we do that, let's build some intuition. Let's imagine some hills, and we place a ball at the bottom of the valley between the hills, and let's include a horizontal axis. Here x represents the horizontal position of the ball. And I'm thinking of how the horizontal position changes in time. So we have x as a function of t. Notice that at the bottom of the hill, the ball doesn't move. Hence, x of t is constant, and x prime of t is equal to zero. We call this an equilibrium point. What we'll do now is imagine pushing the ball up the left hill. And now we release the ball. We see that the ball initially rolls to the right and settles back down at the bottom of the hill. The ball rolling to the right means x of t is increasing, hence x prime of t is greater than zero. What we'll do is add some arrows to the left of our point on the horizontal axis. The idea here is that the arrows tell us that if we push the ball to the left a little bit and release it, it wants to move back to the right. Now we'll push the ball to the right up the hill. And then we release the ball. This time, the ball initially rolls to the left and initially settles back at the bottom of the hill. Rolling to the left means x of t is decreasing, hence now x prime of t is less than zero. Now let's set some arrows to represent this information. These arrows point left and tell us that if we nudge the ball to the right and then release it, it wants to roll back to the left. We're going to call this point a stable equilibrium. We use the word equilibrium because if we place the ball there, it doesn't move. We use the word stable because if we nudge the ball a little to the left or to the right, it comes back to where it started. Now let's look at a different type of equilibrium point. This time, we will balance the ball at the top of the hill. Since the ball doesn't move, we have x prime of t is equal to zero. But now let's see what happens when we nudge the ball to the left. Now the ball doesn't come back to where it started. This time, when we nudge a little to the left, the ball keeps rolling towards the left. Notice that this information is already on our horizontal axis. Let's remove the ball. And again, we'll balance it at the top of the hill. This time, we'll nudge the ball to the right. And again, nudging the ball to the right causes the ball to keep rolling away to the right. Let's include some arrows on the horizontal axis to represent this. Since moving to the right means x of t is increasing, in this region we have that x prime of t is greater than zero. This one we'll call an unstable equilibrium. Again, we use the word equilibrium because if we balance the ball at the top of the hill, it'll stay there. But unstable because the ball doesn't want to be there. If we nudge it a little to the left or a little to the right, it runs away. Now we consider an autonomous first order differential equation. Y prime is equal to Y minus one times Y minus three squared times Y minus five. I've written Y and Y prime instead of Y and T and Y prime of T for aesthetic purposes. We are going to do something weird. I'm going to graph y prime as a function of y. This graph looks something like this. The expression to the right has zeros at y is equal to 1, 3, and 5. Let's mark these on the graph. Note that at these points, y prime is equal to 0. You can see this either by plugging in the function y of t is equal to 1 for all time into the differential equation, or just look at the graph. The functions y of t is equal to 1, or y of t is equal to 3, or y of t is equal to 5, for all t, are our equilibrium solutions to this differential equation. Now I'm going to include arrows on the horizontal axis, just like the previous example. Starting left of 1, we see that y prime is greater than 0, so y is increasing. Hence our arrow points to the right. Between 1 and 3, y prime is less than zero, thus y is decreasing, then our arrow points to the left. Between three and five, 
Again, y prime is less than zero, so y is decreasing, and our arrow points to the left again. To the right of five, y prime is greater than zero, thus y is increasing, and now we have that our arrow points to the right. Let's classify these equilibrium points. Starting at one, and going back to the intuition from the ball example, if we nudge a little to the left, the arrows pointing right tell us that we get pushed back to the right and hence back to one. Similarly, if we nudge a little to the right, we get pushed back to the left and thus back to 1. So this one is a stable equilibrium. Jumping over to 5, the arrow tells us that if we nudge to the left, we'll keep traveling left away from 5, and if we nudge to the right, we'll keep traveling to the right away from 5. Thus 5 is an unstable equilibrium. The middle equilibrium, 3, is a little different. If you nudge to the right, you get pushed back to 3, but if you nudge to the left, you keep traveling to the left away from 3. Let's call this one a semi-stable equilibrium. In previous videos, we approximated solutions to differential equations. This time, we're going to create an approximation to the differential equation itself. We will use the same equation as the previous example y prime is equal to y minus 1 times y minus 3 squared times y minus 5. And to give some intuition on what we're doing, let's look at the graph again. But this time, we're just going to focus on the equilibrium point y is equal to 5. What we're going to be doing is creating a linear approximation to this function at y is equal to 5. So how do we do that? Let's first define a function, f of y. So here, f of y is equal to y minus 1 times y minus 3 squared times y minus 5, which is equal to y prime. We will be doing a first order Taylor expansion of f around y is equal to 5. First note that f of 5 is equal to 0. Just plug in 5 into this equation, you get 5 minus 5 here, which is 0. I don't want to spend a lot of time computing derivatives, so let me just tell you that f prime of y is equal to 4 times y minus 3 times y squared minus 6y plus 7. Then the first order Taylor series around y is equal to 5 is f of 5 plus f prime of 5 times y minus 5, which is equal to 0 plus, uh, computing this, we get 4 times 2 times computing the inside, that's 25 minus 30 plus 2. We get a 2 right here, times y minus 5. And that simplifies to 16 times y minus 5. So near y is equal to 5, we can approximate this differential equation with this simpler differential equation, which I'll write y prime is equal to 16 times y minus 5. This is a different y prime than this y prime, but this is an approximation to this differential equation. The last example I'll do is solving the differential equation y prime is equal to 16 times y minus 5. We can first make a u substitution, so let's let u denote y minus 5. Then we have that u prime is equal to y prime. We have this new differential equation, u prime is equal to 16 u, which implies that u of t is equal to some constant e to the 16t, but u is equal to y minus 5, so this is equal to y of t minus 5. Finally, as the solution to this differential equation, we get y of t 
is equal to CE to the 16T plus 5. And that's where I'm going in this video.